Hello, hello, hello! I'm Ada Shan, and welcome to Speed Dating for Ghosts. So, yeah, it is literally what it sounds like. It's available on Itch.io for $6.99, made by Copy Chaser Games. Now, the actual description is, As a lonely spectre looking for love in the afterlife, you attend a speed dating event and chat up a cemetery's worth of phantoms, wraiths and poltergeists. At the end of the spooky mixer, choose your favourite. They'll take you out to all the best haunts, old folks' homes, creepy houses with new owners, maybe solving a murder is your idea of a good time, or robbing a bank. Ghosts are into all sorts of things. Uh, yeah, so there is a bit of a warning. Um, it contains frank discussions of death and its consequences, both seriously and with intentional humour. So, let's go. Oh, hello there. You must be here for speed dating. My name's Fran. I run this little operation. What are you? Uh, nice to meet you, Fran. You're a nice one. What am I? We get all kinds of ghosts here. Nice ones, sad ones, a few spooky customers. Wow. It gets lonely being a ghost. It has been pretty difficult. It has? Wonderful. Oh, wonderful for me. Let's get started. We've got three rooms set up, each with their own super fun themes. Oh, God. You pick one and sit at a table. Then what? Another ghost who also signed up sits across from you. You'll have a few minutes to get to know them. Then a bell rings and you switch seats. Oh, ding dong. A bell rings from somewhere. Just like that. In all, you'll meet three ghosts over two rounds. And at the end, you get to choose your favourite. If they liked you too, you go on a date. How's all that sound? I'm going to say it again. Uh, we'll see. It'll be an experience at least. First things first though. What? What's that? What does that do? Hello? Oh. Room. We'll go from right, uh, left to right. Room of palms. Is it trees? Oh. Room of palms. It looks like the basement of an old church. Faded linoleum, linoleum floors. Spare walls with the old religious print. Framed in peach coloured wood. On one side is a large open kitchen. Old refrigerators donated by the congregation hum and grip. This must be where the cabbage smell is coming from. Cabbage. Rows of long tables are set up for the next spaghetti supper. They work well enough for today's speed dating. Oh, I've got a ding dong ding dong. Speaking of which, why don't you hit my ding dong ding dong? I'll tell you when I upload. A bell rings and a ghost appears. Here you go, pulley head. Sup. If a guy came up to me and said, sup, I'd be like, uh, bye. I'm Riley. You're pretty hot for a ghost. Uh, slow down there, buddy. Hey, sorry. Just saying. Isn't it cool we stay the age we died? Makes dying young a little better. Why are you speed dating? You're probably thinking... What's this hunk of a man doing here? Not really. I feel ya. Even hunks need a little help sometimes. It's been a while since I bit it. Lovely. Still haven't found the one, you know? I've tried mixers, personal ads. Beefy boy seeks nice ghost for someone. I'm, you're a creep. Nothing doing. So I figured I'd give this a go. It seemed fun. Uh, I'll gender up a ghost. Oh well, so, long story. I was a wide receiver in high school. Guys, help. I need, da down in the comments below, I'm English, I don't know these things. Wide receiver, I was, like, they th throw a ball, I'm assuming because of this, and this guy goes like wide out and catches it, maybe? Got real good. When it came time for college, bam, full scholarship. But football's rough. When you catch passes like I did, you take a lot of blows. After a while, I started getting headaches. 
I'd get dizzy just standing up. But I kept on playing. Had to. I mean, these were my best years. Until one day? Intracranial hematoma. Ouch. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, now I'm here. That's sad, you had potential. I try not to let it get define me, you know? So many ghosts have sad stories. I want to make the best of this. Have some fun. Be the best Riley I can be. It's just hard to figure out what that means. I wish ghosts didn't care so much about labels. It's just like when we were alive. I also, by the way, I love the noise it makes. Listen. Everyone always telling me who I was without bothering to learn who I am. So who are you? I'm still figuring that out. Even without my division high receive without my division high receiving yards, I don't know what that means either. And all the cheering in the stands. Who is Riley? You have unfinished business. Yeah, me and every other ghost. Sigh. I'll thank the gods for that. The bell rings. Oh, not you again. Oh. Oh, snap. Half time. Guess we call time out. Let's keep this going in the second half. How about... No. I don't like you. Another ghost appears. Please don't be a douchebag. Oh. Cough. Hello, sunshine. The ghost takes a long drag of their cigarette. The smoke rises up through their hollow frame, pumping out holes in their back. <sighs> what the hell? Nice to meet you? Is it? That's a surprise. I'm Vera. Vera? That or the lady in smoke. That's what the ghost hunters call me. Ghost hunters? Living weirdos. Trying to prove we exist. Hunters sound dramatic. Gives them too much credit. For years now, I've haunted Vegas. The glitzy condominiums on the strip. Obnoxious houses behind gates. I wake up. Rituals at night. Shrouded in grey smoke. Jangling pennies. Willing, wailing pay the price. Don't quite that. Eh, it's cool. It's not really, but okay. Thanks, hon. I spend lots of time working on it. I like when they choke on the smoke. Choke themselves and wait. This is then they see me floating at the foot of the bed, looking ready for a funeral. It weird. Except when the smoke alarm goes off. Then it's not scary. Did you die in Vegas? I was an executive assistant to this big shot casino owner. This was back in the boom. Everyone moved in post-war. By the early 50s, it was a wonderland. Cough. My boss was a real piece of work. Balding, bad suits, always eating peanuts. I don't blame him, I like peanuts. Tossing back rye. He was obsessed with money. He got it any way he could, he's an asshole then. And never let it go. Sounds like Mr. Krabs. No one liked him, eh, and, but plenty feared him. It was my job to keep his sins quiet. Anyway, that's me. What brings you to this thing? I was lonely. I hear you. I'm about as lonely as a lost shoot. Just as useless, too. You get used to it. Also, you never get used to it. Oh, wonderful. We can be lonely together. Whoa there. <laughs> He's up on the throttle we just met. Not that I don't appreciate the thought. I mean, I could be friends. I didn't mean that like, oh my God, we're going to be together forever. I wanted to be your friend, the bell rings. Guess that's the bell. We'll have to pick this up later. See ya. Okay. That one was better than the first. Another ghost appears. Oh, hello. Hiya. Hey, I'm Stephanie. But you don't call me Steph. You scare me. Everybody does. Hi, Steph. Hey. Oh gosh, I'm nervous. I've never done anything like this before. I spent like an hour putting my face on this morning. <laughs> you look nice. Thank you. That's what you have to say. Why do you look like a planet? I feel so awkward. Speed dating is so awkward. 
Like, what do you say? My name's Steph and I play the clarinet. My name's Steph and I'm teaching myself Japanese. What if you think my hobbies are bad? What if you think I'm a weirdo? When you only have so much time to talk, the first thing you say makes all the difference. First impressions are everything. You say that, but there's still going to be that moment, that first time we see one another, the first time we hear each other speak. Those moments set the tone. Everything else is either validating that initial impression or trying to subvert it. You're already surprising me. I am? I mean, that's great, right? I'd rather be surprising than a bore. Tell me about playing the clarinet. you got to commit to it. When I first learned as a kid, we rented one, which was gross, because, well, you have this cloth. It's like a little metal thing attached to a long string. The cloth is on the other end. When you're done playing, you take the mouthpiece off and run the little metal thing through the clarinet to pull the cloth through and despitify it. Hey. What happens if you don't? It's not a big deal. It'll just get gross after a while. Kind of mouldy. Hey. Do you miss playing? Not really. I mean, I still practice every day. Can dead people play the clarinet? Of course not. They're dead. They can't breathe, so they can't play. Why even ask that? Because you're dead? Are you threatening me? Because that is super not cool. I'm going to tell Fran. She'll ban you. I don't understand. I understand extremely well. You're a jerk. And possibly dangerous. And after the bell... That bell right there. I'm going to talk to Fran about your behaviour. Goodbye, jerk. What the hell? What? The second round begins. Oh, not you again. Ugh. I'm Riley again. Haha. Uh -huh. So, like, what should we talk about now? Uh, I have no idea. Oh. Well, if you have no idea, and I have no idea, this will be a weird few minutes. Dot dot dot. Hmm. Dot dot dot. Clicks tongue. Dot dot dot. Um something. About the football in your head. So, like, this may surprise you, but people always ask about the football in my head. I consider it a badge of honour, but also a reminder. You can push yourself too hard and lose everything you work for. Five too many hits to the head. Whammo. Sports ghost at your service. Here to tell you that, that all goals have limits. That's good advice, right? I like using sports to make sense of stuff. It works super good. Need to fix something? Draw up a play. You won't get anywhere without a plan. What do you have planned for us? Only the best time ever. I want to share something important to me. Let you see O'Reilly in its natural habitat. Please do. Oh. He's still an ass, but... So, like, I was thinking, it might be fun to see a game together. My old team's playing our state rivals. It's been a while since I've checked in on them. Yeah, I like that. Right, cheers. Just tap me after they wrap up here. I'll pick you up in my ghost car. It's a convertible. Of course it is. Even when I'm dead, I know how to live. Bye. Vera. Hello, Vera. Hello again, Sunshine. Good to see you back around. <coughs> we already talked a bit about how I lived the Vegas life. My crooked casino boss, I'd like to tell you about how I died. I'm honestly curious. It's speed dating. Might as well lay my cards out. One day in 1954, the casino rang me up. A voice, the boss's son, said they were out of clean shirts. It was maybe 6am. The sun wasn't up yet. I dropped my girl off at a city and rushed over to the casino. You had a daughter? Sure did. I was a single mum in the 50s. In case you're doubting why I stayed at the job, the casino front doors were locked. The doors were never locked. Security let me in and led me to the blackjack tables where my boss was waiting, dead on the floor. Blood, soaking into the burgundy carpet. How did he die? A knife, probably. These guys hated guns. His son was there. He smiled when he saw me. You'll make this go away, he said. I nodded. Two guys bigger than horses stepped up behind me. 
They loaded my dead boss into the trunk of a black car. One of them drove, the other made sure to sit with me in the back seat. Did you know them? No. All their toughs look the same. I swear they worked a year and then got put down. Like my boss had been put down. God, you're very happy, aren't you? And I kept thinking about where this put me. When we got to the desert, would they bury me too? But they didn't. I watched as my boss, friend to the mayor, a builder, a legend, got what he deserved. A hole in the sand. Uh, you girl was at the desert. And, and she stayed there. I wasn't about to pick her up. At least not until things cooled down. So how did you die? I went home alone, locked all the doors and windows, turned off all the lights and waited. Nothing happened. Until I nodded off. I woke to an intense heat, took a deep breath, sucking in hot black smoke. My lungs felt like they were burning. I couldn't see. They'd burned my home down, after making sure I was inside. What about your kid? I made sure she was taken care of. Had a bunch of money stashed away. My brother in Tulsa took her in. For a long time, I couldn't bear to see her. And by the time I was ready, I couldn't find her. I can't even tell you if she's still alive. Oh, that is really, 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 really sad. The bell rings. Sorry this got so grim. After this is all over, maybe we can grab a drink and try not to let the past haunt us, even for just an hour. Wait, I want to go with you. Oh, God. So, um, Steph came to talk to me about what you said. Am I in trouble? No. As you may have already guessed, Steph didn't know she'd died. When you said you're dead, she thought you were threatening her. I don't know how she went this long. Some deep denial at work, maybe. Anyways, she wants to talk to you again, but go easy on her, okay? I'm sure you remember when you died. Not really. The confusion. It's not fun. These mixes are supposed to be fun. Try to keep them that way, okay? Okay. Okay. Potassium! Oh god. So I did. So I, um, talked to Fran. Sorry I freaked out before. I chose my words poorly. You were direct. You're dead. Maybe I needed to hear it bluntly. It's just. This is so weird. I still feel alive. Just like. dissociated. Like the world is going on without me. It's a familiar feeling. I feel it a lot when. felt it a lot when I was alive too. What was your life like? It was difficult, except not really. Mostly, life was pretty good. Good parents? Good parents, for sure. That, there was really only one thing wrong with them. They were cooler than me. When I was born, they were in their early 20s. They were into all this weird music, artsy movies about ballet school witches, and fantastic planets that were just creepy. My dad even smoked alternative cigarettes. Eh, thing there. Meanwhile, I was at that... I was that dork with the puzzles, learning languages for fun. My parents were excited when I joined band. They thought it would help me make friends. Mostly I just liked to practice alone in my room. I wish my parents had been cool. No you don't. Sigh. I shouldn't be too hard on them. They were by my side during the worst of it. The worst of what? This is hard to talk about. Fran said we should just have fun. Dot dot dot. I had cancer. Oh, a brain tumour. It was bad. Diagnosed a week after my 19th birthday. I started getting headaches and feeling confused about things. Things would just look wrong, out of place. It's hard to describe. How long did they give you? They gave me a few months. With treatment that turned into a year, they said it was aggressive. So they had to be aggressive. Eventually the symptoms subsided, it seemed like they zapped it. Told me I was progression free, whatever that means. I was allowed to go back to school, but I didn't. I retreated to my room. After so much time facing death, I had a lot of trouble facing people. Funny, huh? Now I'm facing death and people. I wouldn't say that was funny. This is more tragic than anything. There's the bell. I guess it's back out into the world now. I have a lot to figure out. It was nice to meet you. Thanks for helping me talk this out. Steph leaves the room. If you hurry, you could catch up to her. See if she'd like to talk some more. 
Then again, a date with a ghost like Steph might not be the most exciting. She's no football honk, nor is she the infamous lady in smoke. <sighs> well, choose your date. No, Steph would depress me. She's interesting, but she would depress me. Riley, he's not exactly my type. I don't know. Football, no. But creepy things, I'm going to go with Vera. I like Vera. You meet Vera outside. She's smoking in the dark. Took you long enough. Not really, though. I'm just kidding around. So, what do you want to do? The world's our way. Vera stops talking. She seems distracted all of a sudden. You hear that? I didn't hear anything. I heard a voice. There it is again. A voice. Did you hear it this time? I still don't hear it. I'm hearing a second voice. This one sounds familiar. Like the way I'd sound if someone recorded me. Me, but not me. This is so weird. I'll say. The voice is calling out to me. It's saying, Vera, are you there? We're trying to reach Vera. Dead on the 5th November 1954. And then the other voice, the one that sounds so familiar. It says, Where are you, Mum? Oh! Oh no, my daughter? I... I'm sorry. I have to go. Yes, go! I have to find her. Go! Go! I understand! Go! I'm sorry about this one. I just... I need to figure out what's going on here. Go! You could come with me, if you wanted. If it's not too much trouble. I know trouble. You're not it. These voices, though, I'm not sure. What I'm hearing, it sounds like my daughter. But, well, you know what I've done. It might be nice to have some backup. I'll come with you. You follow Vera to the source of the voices in her head. A small bungalow on a... I love that word, bungalow. On a quiet street on the other side of town. There's a square hedge around the front yard and a neon side of the window. Psychic readings. Psychic readings. Know the future. Know yourself. That is really buzzing in my ear. Let's go inside. Inside, the house is dark except for a dim room towards the back, lit by trembling candles. Two people are seated at a table facing each other. One is a young woman dressed in black with multiple piercings. She appears to be the psychic and playing the part with witchy flair. The second woman sits across from her. This woman is in her 70s, wearing wireframe glasses and a long black dress. She looks like a retired librarian, and she does. That's my daughter. Is this a seance? Sure looks that way. What happens now? I feel a presence. Vera's daughter opens her eyes. Mum, are you there? Yeah, it's going to be Mum. Your mother is here. She may not be able to speak, but she is listening. Mum, I sense two presences. Two? Yes. One is unknown to me. The psychic breathes in deeply. You may now ask your mother a question. Perhaps she will respond. Mom, it's Jane. I I need to know what happened. How you really died. The police, the papers, they all said it was an accident. But I found your letters. Mom, what did they do to you? I can't I can't tell her. What happened? It's too hard. Can you say something? I need her to know. I'm out there. I'm just not sure I can do it. Okay. I do it. <sighs> the psychic repeats what you say word for word. The letters roll through every word. I'm sorry I left you. I did it so, so you could live. Jane begins to cry. You didn't leave me. They took you from me. I was only a little girl. I'm so sorry, Mum. I miss you so much. Oh my god, I am actually going to cry. I miss you too. Oh my god. Oh my 
god, that was so sad. Oh no, I'm going to cry. Oh no. That, that was really good, actually. I didn't expect that. No, oh my god, I've got tears. Tears. But, yeah, um, very interesting. Some very strange characters. Um, yeah. So, I am going to do a few more of these, I think. Because we've got the different rooms. And then we've also got the different characters, so... Depending on what goes on. Oh, sorry. Ugh, big yawn. I apologise. Uh, depending on what goes on, I might record it, I might not. I might just do a little flash update kind of thing. But yeah, um, link to the game's down in the description below. As said, it is six ninety nine USD on itch.io, made by Copy Chaser Games. And honestly, it's it's really good, really interesting. Like twenty minutes ish, maybe thirty, something like that, flew by literally. I didn't even realise the time. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. As always, drop me a comment down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, yeah, if you've played it yourself, let me know. And explain these football references to me because I really don't know anything about American football. But yeah, drop a like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And I shall see you again next time. Bye, guys.